Hermann von Kuhl, 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 Kuhl. Hermann Joseph von Kuhl, 2 November 1856, 4 November 1958, was a Prussian military officer, member of the German general staff, and a general lieutenant during World War I, one of the most competent commanders in the German army. He retired in 1919 to write a number of critically acclaimed essays on the war. Hermann von Kuhl is one of only three recipients to be distinguished with both the military class and peace class of the poor Lemerite, Prussia's and Germany's highest honor. Pre-war period Hermann Kuhl was born in Koblenz, Rheinpusen, Rhenish Prussia, the son of a professor of philosophy at the Julich Progymnasium. He studied philosophy, classical philology, German studies and comparative linguistics at the universities of Leipzig, Tübingen, Marburg, and Berlin. In 1878, he received his D. Phil from Tübingen magna cum laude with the dissertation De Salurum Carmenibus. During his studies, he was a member of the University of Leipzig's singing group St. Pauli. On 1 October 1878, he joined the 5th Westphalian Infantry Regiment No. 53 column as a cadet. He was promoted to lieutenant in 1879 and Oberlieutenant in 1889 when he competed in the entrance examination for the Prussian Military Academy where he studied from 1889 to 1892. Winning appointment to the general staff, he was seconded to the staff for six months before becoming a company commander in Grenadier Regiment NR. Finally, in 1897, he returned to the Prussian Military Academy in Berlin as an instructor and concurrently served as a member of the third department of the general staff, which monitored France, Britain, and the Low Countries. The intelligence from this department was essential for the development of Feldmarschall Alfred Graf von Schlieffen's plan. Kuhl's career flourished because he met the high standards of the demanding Schlieffen, who predicted that he would become a great captain of the future. In 1899, he was promoted to major and married. He learned much participating in Schlieffen's staff rides and war games. After Schlieffen's retirement, Kuhl became head of the third department, and was promoted to lieutenant colonel and then colonel. His first major publication, on Bonaparte's campaign of 1796, appeared in 1902. Further promotion depended on further command experience, so the new chief of the general staff, Helmuth von Moltke, persuaded the Kaiser's War Cabinet to appoint him to command the 25th Infantry Brigade Munster. A day later, on 4 June 1912, Kuhl was promoted to general major. A year later, during the 25th anniversary celebration of the reign of Kaiser Wilhelm Roman II, he was knighted and thereby became von Kuhl. On 1 January 1914, he returned to the general staff as an Oberquartier Meister. World War I, War I, War I, War I, War I, War I, War I. At the outbreak of World War I on 2 August 1914, Von Kuhl became chief of staff in General Alexander von Kluck's First Army, which was the crucial right flank of the swinging door in the Schlieffen plan. Kluck regarded him as a notable man of most energetic character and wide views. Mentally and physically he was imperturbable, and in addition to an extremely cultivated mind, he possessed a personal bravery on the battlefield which from time to time evoked a caution from the army commander. By adroit staff planning, they squeezed their 320,000 men through a 10 km 6.2 my strip of land between Liege and the Dutch border. Pivoting down into France, they swept back the British expeditionary force. Shortly thereafter, they had reached the Marne River and were transferring men to their right flank to fend off a French thrust from Paris. With the tip of the Eiffel Tower on the horizon, they were sure that complete victory beckoned nonetheless. They were ordered to retreat because of concern about the gap between their right flank and the German Second Army abandoning the Schlieffen plan. Kuhl always maintained that the retreat was a disastrous, unnecessary failure of nerve. He was promoted to General Lieutenant on 18 April 1915. On 22 September in that same year, he became Chief of Staff in General Max von Fabich's 12th Army, which was shifted to the Eastern Front. 
Next, starting on 24 November 1915, he served, in the same capacity, in the Sixth Army on the Western Front, which was commanded by General Crown Prince Ruprecht of Bavaria. Ruprecht's pro-war career was in the Bavarian Army. For exemplary service during the Battle of the Somme, Kuhl received the Poor Le Merit on 28 August 1916. At the end of August 1916, Ruprecht was given command of Army Group Crown Prince Ruprecht German. Here is Grupp Crown Prince Ruprecht with Kuhl as Chief of Staff. Ruprecht was one of four senior members of German royal families who were appointed Army Group commanders. He was regarded as difficult, according to Chief of the General Staff Erich von Falkenhayn, one man, which made Kuhl especially important. The Army Group was responsible for the Ypres salient. Their major challenge was to funnel in the reserves to counter the British attacks. Kuhl received the Kingdom of Bavaria's highest purely military honor, the Military Order of Max Joseph, on 13 December 1916. By then Field Marshal Paul von Hindenburg and General Erich Ludendorff had taken command. In 1917 the Germans again fought bitter defensive battles in the West, while in the East they drove the Russians out of the war. Hence, at the beginning of 1918 they outnumbered their opponents in the West, and they were determined to attack for victory. Kuhl's proposal for an attack on the vital British railroads in Flanders was accepted, but while waiting for the ground to dry there, in March 1918 they smashed through the southern British front near Cambrai, using troops from the two armies on the southern flank of Army Group Ruprecht. Their success was so overwhelming that they extended the attack, but failed to separate the French and British armies and depleted resources intended for Flanders. When they did attack there, they smashed through the British and Portuguese lines, but were stopped short of their strategic goal. To drain Allied reserves from Flanders, the Germans shifted direction to hit the French in the south, once again shredding through their opponents' lines, but failing to smash their will to resist. The Germans were about to attack again and Flanders so cool, Ruprecht and their artillery commanders were meeting with Ludendorff to finalize the plans for the opening barrage when they learned by telephone that a joint French and American assault had shredded the German flank in the south. As Ruprecht wrote in his diary, no doubt, we have passed the high point of this year's achievements. They all realized that they lacked the resources for continuing their attacks, so they went on the defensive. After their defeat at the Battle of Amiens on 11 August 1918, Ruprecht and his staff recognized that Germany's position had become hopeless. Their headquarters had moved to Turni 24 April 1918. Now they retreated to Mons 2 September 1918, and finally to Brussels 17 October 1918, reflecting the long withdrawal from the Western Front and the final collapse of the German army. Ruprecht resigned his post on 11 November 1918. For the march back to Germany, the army group was designated a German. Heeresgrupp and Kuhl was made General der Infanterie to oversee its orderly demobilization. Following this final military assignment, he retired. Post-war period, period, or period, or period, or period, or period, 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 period. In retirement, von Kuhl published books and numerous essays, articles, and reviews about leadership problems on the Western Front during the war. He discussed the Schlieffen Plan in 1920 in an article written for general readers entitled Why Did the Marne Campaign Fail? This sparked a debate concerning German strategy that continued throughout the 1920s and early 1930s, and again in the 1950s. Perhaps his most popular book in its day was The German General Staff in the Preparation and Conduct of the World War 1920, republished several times. He also wrote an essay, The World War in the Judgment of Our Enemies, 1922. He was a member of the Commission to oversee the publication of the official German history of the war. A string of notable works was capped in 1929 when he published Weltkrieg 1914-1918 two extensive volumes, covering the entire war, which firmly established his reputation as a historian. 
In the 1920s, von Kuhl was appointed to the Historical Commission of the Reich Archives and gave evidence to the Weimar Republic's parliamentary inquiries on the reasons for the military collapse of 1918. In his testimony, von Kuhl concluded the German offensive of spring 1918 had to battle with severe challenges. Malenges. Severe challenges. Ninjas. 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 Jeez. The mobility of the army was limited. Front-line units were gradually exhausted, while the enemy's combat power grew substantially. This stands in contrast to General Erich Ludendorff, who spent his post-war years promoting a far-right stab in the back legend that blamed the German defeat without an honorable peace on Marxists and Republicans at home. Military historian Hans Mayer Welker summed up von Kuhl this way for a deep historical understanding of the World War, even if not free of temporal apology, he performed a significant contribution. For his post-war work, von Kuhl was awarded the Poor Le Merit for Wissenschaften und Kunst English, Order of Merit in the Sciences and Arts, in 1924, Germany's highest civilian decoration. Hermann von Kuhl spent his last few years living with his nephew in Frankfurt am Main. He died there on 4 November 1958 at the age of 102, quite possibly the last surviving German World War I general. Awards For Le Merit, 28 August 1916, one of the few recipients of both the military class and the civil class, and all class, Avil class, Oak leaves to the poor Le Merit. 20 December 1916, Commander of the Military Order of Max Joseph Bavaria, 13 December 1916, Order of the Red Eagle, Knight Second Class with Oak Leaves and Swords, 12 January 1918, Order of the Crown First Class with Swords Prussia, 22 March 1918. Poor Le Merite for Sciences and Arts for his Historical Studies, 5 December 1924, Naming of a street in Koblenz, von Kuhlstrasse. Dates of ranks. Fonrich, 1 October 1878. Lieutenant, 12 January 1879. Oberlieutenant, 16 February 1889. Altman, 14 September 1892. Major, 13 September 1899. Oberstleutnant, 10 April 1906. Oberst, 24 March 1909. General Major 4, June 1912. General Lieutenant, 18 April 1915. General Der Infantry, 18 November 1918. Works by von Kuhl. Der Deutsch General Stab in Vorbereitung und Deutsch für und des Weltkrieges. Mittler, Berlin, 1920 online. Der Marnefelds of 1914. Mittler, Berlin, 1921 online. Ersachen des Zusammenbruchs und Stehung der Führung und Zusammenbruch der Offensive von 1918. Hobbing, Berlin 1923. Unity of Command among the Central Powers in Foreign Affairs, September 1923, online at Foreign Affairs. Com, der Weltkrieg 1914-1918. Dem Deutschen Volk dargestellt. Two Band. Tradition W. Kalk. Berlin, 1929, with General Walter Friedrich Adolf von Bergmann, Movements and Supply of the German First Army during August and September, 1914, Fort Leavenworth, Command and General Staff School Press, 1929. Online Literature Hans Mayer Welker, General der Infanterie v. Kuhl, 96, Jaralt, in Weyerwissenschaftel Rundschau. Band 2, 1952, Heft 11, P550.